testing one, two, three, testing. We'll see what happens in just a moment. And we've got sound and we are live. Hello, YouTube community. It's been a little while since I've been on the air. It's been a little bit hectic around here for a couple of reasons. I've been trying to decompress. I gotta get my chair adjusted here properly. I've been trying to decompress a bit from my um, from last week where we had the whole Honey Badger's Brigade trial versus Calgary Expo, which ended up quite successful. Um, I can't go into details, but when I part a company with the Honey Badgers, everybody was optimistic. Um, both the parties in the suit had gone behind uh, closed doors and were in the process of discussing uh, terms. and. That's all I can say, um, all I'm comfortable saying at this point, simply because I don't want to jeopardize anything that's going on there. That's really for them to discuss, and once they've set it out, set things forth, they can uh, take it from there. One thing I can tell you, because this is all public record, is towards the end of the third day of testimony, it was clear to everyone in the courtroom that the defense's case was just crumbling. It was completely falling apart. So, being what it is, I had to just double check my audio there. I'm going to have to bump up the internal volume. Um, so bear, bear with me while I do that. But it was clear that the that the whole thing for the defense was falling apart they didn't they knew full well that they didn't stand much of a chance at getting anywhere with this so i'm uh, i'm pleased to report that it looks like things are going to fall apart for the defense and hopefully we'll have a settlement or some kind of report to give you a bit later on. So there we go. So that was just me doing a quick sound check again. Now today, I'm going to talk about something rather interesting. This is about a conversation that I had on Facebook over the weekend with uh, some people, we'll call them, I am friends with a gentleman named Jim. I'm not going to go any further with his information because it is um, important to me that I protect his privacy and the privacy of the people who were involved in this discussion. Let's just say that Jim is a rather popular gentleman and uh, over the course of the weekend he was involved in judging a wet t-shirt contest here in Calgary. Now, I'm a red-blooded Canadian male. I have no problem with wet t-shirt contests. But Jim mentioned that there, there were some individuals who were rather angry. Um, apparently, to quote Jim, a thing happened, and when things happen, people get upset. Understandable. It's also understandable that there is a number of people who would classify themselves as feminists, who do not appreciate such events, such things. They think that they are, oh, I don't know what the word to use is, um, somewhat objectifying of women. There were other women who supported it. So anyway, so Jim had put this up on Facebook and I thought it would be uh, appropriate for me to make a comment. Now, as I said, I'm not a po as I said, there was no opposition to the thing, there was no judgment on the validity of it, it was just what it was. So, be that as it may, so let's see what happened. Let's, let's go through this conversation and it's, uh, well, it's educational to say the least. It just goes to show the, the state of mind of feminists today. As I said, the name of this stream is Close Encounters of the Feminist Kind. Let's see what we get. So, here we go. You can see my first, uh, my first comment here was very straightforward. I don't think the feminist community knows what it likes, I write. One day they're celebrating women's empowerment through the porn and sex industries. 
And the next, they're screaming at judges of wet t-shirt contests. Like, basically, I'm saying, what do these guys want? And it's not wrong, by the way. Now, that was it. There's no value judgment here. There's no, this is a great thing, this is a, or this is a bad thing. This is just what it is. <laughs> so, so there's that. Now, here's the response that I got. Now, this is where it gets rather amusing. So, a lady comes on, and she says, whoops, don't judge the entire feminist movement based on the actions of a few, condemning an entire group of people based on its extremist margins leads to unfortunate shit. Now, she's right. She's absolutely right. Now, as you can see, I've taken her name off here, so we're going to call her B, okay? And that's what she said, and that's a perfectly reasonable thing to say. And as you can see, my response to her said as much. I do not disagree with that statement at all, I write. Certainly, I have no issues with true equality, as in no regard given to gender at all, unless it is a required element, such as a female, female part in a play or a film or, you know, along those lines. I do have a serious issue with such things as the mythological wage gap, which vanishes when you control for life choices, career choices, educational choices, which I didn't put in, but it's there, hours spent at work, vacation, time taken, etc. Where was I? Etc. And of course, there's also the campus rape culture, which suggests that campus rape occurs at a level equal or higher to than the rape of rape, rape in places where it is used as a weapon, like the Sudan. I'd never send my child to university with a rape rate that high. So, while I agree that the underlying principles of feminism, and I did the SM there in capitals on purpose, are perfectly valid, equality of the sexes, the experience seems to be that feminism as a brand or an advocacy group has expanded beyond that and largely into the realm of extremism. I have zero issues with people like Christina Hoff Summers, the factual feminist. Oh, and, and, and I think I should add that various issues raised by men's rights advocates, such as paternity fraud, false rape accusations, domestic violence support, and so on, are just as valid as well. You see, I just expanded on my initial point and talked about in response to what she had said to me. Now, as you can see, I have highlighted the time, okay? That is an important piece of information because if you look at the time that I put my initial comment up, it went up at 8.39 a.m., B responds at 8.47, and then I respond to B at 8.53. So time has passed, okay? That's an important piece of information. Now, we continue. B writes back. And when does B write back here? 9.03. B writes. I don't think that feminism as a movement or philosophy negates the need for or validation of men's rights. Again, this is all perfectly cordial, perfectly civil. This is a great discussion so far. I think that thinking it does misrepresents the fundamentals of equality. I don't think it negates it. I, I think that the two are two movements in parallel to each other right now. And I, quite frankly, I think the two unit movements should converge. But all the time that, well, we'll see in a few minutes, all the time that we have uh, creatures such as Chanty Binks, a.k.a. Big Red, screaming at the top of their lungs with this shrill voice while potentially foaming at the mouth with rabid saliva dripping down. Now, I'm exaggerating but she is a pretty screechy, horrible person. Um, that isn't going to happen. I think the thinking it does misrepresents the fundamentals of equality. I also need to ask what your ba you base your idea that the wage gap in campus rape culture, or is it all rape culture, is mythological on? I've already indicated as such. As for brand the branding of feminism, are you referring to the fact that it is gaining more of a voice? 
or that big name companies are using it to sell a product. I didn't mention branding of feminism at all. I mentioned that femi this is what feminism is or has become. And then again, now, I've written two so far. B has written two. Here's B's number three. We should be keeping score. So, Steve two, B is now three. Here's a factual statistics from a credible source about the wage gap. And she sends me to CBC, which is filtered because it's filtered through the CBC filter. And she sends me to StatsCamp, which shows a gender wage gap of women making 87 cents on every man's dollar. Now, I want to make a point here. If this was actually true, all every employer across the country would need to do would be fire all their male employees and hire women. Right? They can hire them for 30, 13 cents less an hour. Like, really, that's all they need to do. Hire more women, fire all the men. You save yourself a 13 cents an hour. On a 40-hour work week, let's say a workforce of you fire 10 men and you hire 10 women. So multiply by 10 times 40 times 50 weeks. That's $2,600 in savings a year. If your workforce is bigger, your savings are bigger. So there you go. You see, th this is how absurd this point is. So I respond, right? This is now Steve 3. B is at 3 now. However, I write, it is based on adding up all the male salaries and dividing by the number of samples. An average, a straight average across the board. Repeating the process for females and then spitting out a result. And so when you do that, you get 87 on the dollar. It doesn't look at things like lifestyle churches, lifestyle churches, lifestyle choices, university degrees and such. Access to the STEM, STEM fields are open to everyone, and if you don't believe that, ask why there are more female veterinarians than male, male veterinarians. That is a STEM subject, right? Science, technology, engineering, math. I'm definitely not saying that there aren't areas where the mix isn't 50-50, but I don't think the wage gap is nearly as wide as it's made out to be. Again, a civil, logical, calm response to a civil, logical message. Okay, so B's at three now. I'm at three. This is, I'm, I'm talking, I'm giving you these numbers. I'm count, keeping score here because this is important for what I'm about to come to. So let's move on to slide number three. Now B writes, sorry Stephen, but it looks like you're working pretty hard to discredit an entire movement and one that I strongly believe in and live in every day. Trying to convince me that the fundamentals of feminism don't have merit isn't going to work. Before I spend a bunch of time on a def defensive of my stance, I'm just going to just check myself and let you go ahead and feel how you feel. Oh, how nice of you. Thank you so much. I do believe that there are some big holes in your theories, though. Okay. Um, now, so now we're at four for B, three for Steve. Okay, and this one came in at 10 after 9 in the morning. Ah, another one might be. 5 for B, 3 for Steve. If these are ideas you feel especially challenged on, I urge you to take a step back from a defensive posture and ask yourself why you really feel that. Okay, now, I'm going to pause here because I need you to understand something. I have, um, going through this, what I have done is I have used Photoshop, obviously, to take the names off. And in the process, I also took the liberty of threading the comments so we could see which one was a response to which to make it easier to follow. Facebook comment threads can get a little bit convoluted if you go more than one level deep. That's why I've done that, okay? So this one came in at 9.12, 5 for B, 3 for Steve. Now, I write back. Fair enough. Just understand that there are ways where the same information can be multi interpreted multiple ways. Okay, so B has indicated that she's going to step back from a defensive posture, or she's going to step back from the discussion. I have indicated, fair enough. And I've said there are ways of where the same information can be multiple, interpreted multiple ways. 
Again, anything wrong with that? I don't think so. I think that's a fair statement to make, because it's true, right? Think of the image of two black candlesticks or two white faces. She writes, okay, take it from a woman's point of view. This system is still patriarchal. Ah, 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 drink. It may be hard for you to emphasize, empathize, but it is. I don't need to empathize. I get it. Patriarchal in your view. There we go. So B writes, I'm done now. I think we're up to seven now for B. I write, as you wish. Just know I'm not trying to be defensive. I was seriously trying to have a disgusting, ugh, a disgusting, a constructive and informative, interesting discussion. And that's really the end, right? Right there. I'm saying, okay, bye. You know, just kind of have a constructive and informative, interesting discussion. And that was at 9.15 in the morning. Okay, so let's count here. Post by me, post by B. There's one by me, one by B. One by me. Two, me, one B. Here we've got... To me, to B, three B to me, two, uh, three B, three for me, B, and then down below where I'm not going to print it up again is six for B, and then there's one in here, four for me, six to four so far, seven. I'm done now. She writes. I write back. Okay. As you wish, just know that I am really not trying to be defensive. I was seriously trying to have a constructive and informative, interesting discussion. So far, like, again, everything written so far has been cordial. It has been polite. It has been reasonable. It is what it is. B has to write me back. So we're now up to eight to five. These conversations might seem interesting to you, she writes but they're actually exhausting to me. It's hardly the first or most likely the last time that I'll be faced with having to explain why and how the system is on, the system on unbalanced, I think she means is unbalanced, when I've experienced the imbalance my whole life. I'm surrounded by it. It doesn't feel like an open, informative discussion. It feels, it feels like gaslighting. And you see, there's another buzzword, gaslighting. And it's exhausting. If you want answers and facts and justifications, please pursue that through credible sources. I'm not responsible for gathering information for you. No, you're not. I mean that with all the gentleness, but that's how I feel. Yeah, fine. Again, I've been very clear. I will respect, I've respected her wishes to leave the conversation. I've said that we can interpret the same, it's possible to interpret the same data multiple ways, but she felt the need to come back in and write another post saying, this feels like gaslighting. I haven't done anything other than show her, respond to the information that she provided saying, this is what this, this is your way of looking at it. This is my way of looking at it. That's all I've done. So I write back, that's six for me, eight for B. I fully understand and I will leave it here since you have made it abundantly clear that you would rather not continue. But I will also recommend you give the Red Pill documentary a chance. That's a film by a lady by the name of Cassie Jane. She's a feminist, or she was a feminist when she wrote it. Spoiler warning, she's not a feminist anymore. Even if you end up not agreeing with the content, and that is perfectly valid, every step of the way, I'm validating her feelings. I'm saying your feelings are valid. It's okay to feel this. I understand that you feel this way. I thought I'm being very, very nice here considering the fact that I have a reputation for being a bit of a, a jackass, it's never a bad thing to challenge your ideas. And it isn't. It's a good thing to challenge your ideas. B writes back. Nine for B. Six for Steve. Actually, let me make that seven for me. Done it, she writes. It's problematic. There's another buzzword. Drink on a number of levels. Also disheartening and, again, exhausting. It questions a patriarchal system, buzzword, that oppresses, there's a buzzword that I didn't highlight, 
all genders, but is essentially male-centric while invalidating buzzword, anyone that thinks exists outside the norm. Seriously, enough now. Okay, again, 9 for B, 7 for me. And she keeps telling me enough. Every step of the way, I have said, okay, as you wish. This one is 9.27 a.m. Somebody named L has joined the discussion and writes, you're my hero to B. Now, note, this was not written by B. This was written by L. And this was also written a little later. As you can see, my reply came in at 12.41 p.m. I write, and we'll just go 8. Go 1, because I'm responding to a different person. I really don't know what B here did that was heroic, except for have a discussion. Politely express your disagreement with me, which is perfectly fair and reasonable. See? And then say that she didn't want to continue. All of which was reasonable, but I really don't think it counts as heroic. It's not. She said, okay, here's what I think. I disagree with you, and it's not heroic. Or, I, I don't want to continue. Okay. I said, fine. Somebody else writes, I responded. L writes, if you were me, you'd know. Okay, fine. Two L, one me. So that's fine. As you can see, things are going well. It is now 1.10 p.m. And again, I am leaving it alone. Slide number six. S comes in, whoever this S person is. When she wrote it, she writes, it is exhaust when she wrote is it exhausting to defend one's views endlessly, merely because the other side has a hard time understanding she meant it. Whatever, okay. So she's heroic to all of us that feel exhausting defending our right to a fair wage, right to an opinion without being called emotional, or the right to not be objectified. Not saying you were doing this. Good, because I wasn't. But please be aware that while you have the relative luxury of defending your point of view with what others will call logic, we have to be aware of tone, sources, and not being overly emotional about a topic. Just tell me what you think. This is Facebook. There is no tone. It is what it is. It's just text on a screen. Write your stuff, and I will evaluate what you write and decide what I think, and I will respond. That is the way this works. It makes conversations like this exhausting, and it's hard to not throw up our hands in frustration and walk away. Which, by the way, is also seen as overly emotional and illogical. It depends on what you're getting frustrated about. I've done it. I said, oh, screw this, and walked away, because there's no point in continuing a discussion. If a discussion gets boring, I leave it. If a discussion becomes futile, I leave it. And see, and now, this one came in at 4.47. I'm going to make a note here, because I'm keeping score easy. I want to see how many people wrote what. Me, I write. The main thing here is, from my perspective, is talk fact and reason. And expect the same from me. Again, I have not yelled at anyone. I have not said anything nasty. I have not been me. I have been polite, calm, respectful. Said it's perfectly valid to hold your opinion, as it is. And I don't agree with it. And I don't agree with it because of this. I have not, and nobody has added any new information to the discussion. Now all we're doing is we're going back and forth and we're talking about why someone may be seen as heroic, why they're not. I have said my piece, they have said theirs. Okay. I work on the premise that facts don't care about feelings. Thanks, Ben. And if you give me documented fact rather than invective, I will happily re-engage in the same way, which so far has been going very nicely. For example, B quoted a StatsCan source above, albeit filtered through the CBC, which is a valid source. I've used StatsCan myself as well. However, as is quite clear, I interpreted the same raw data quite differently from B. Again, it's a statement of truth. Both interpretations are valid interpretations. 
it validates her position. Where we differ, and I'm now explaining where our disagreement is coming from, as if, so what I'm doing is I'm indicating this is why we are disagreeing. I understand the source of our disagreement. How is this a bad thing? Both interpretations are valid interpretations. Where we differ is which interpretation each of us considers to carry more weight. The straight average interpretation, hers, or the interpretation which controls for things such as career choice, hours, mat leave, and so on. Now, look at the time. 4.57 p.m. This conversation has gone over the course of the day. So far, I have written seven, eight, nine emails, comments. Others, nine, uh, one, and one. So we've got 11. We're tied. 11 all. 11 to 7, yep, 8, 9, 9. Okay, so there's a couple more by me at this point, but we've got different people coming in here. Now, S is actually a decent, a decent individual. Read this. That's a, that's a fair perspective, she writes. I'm merely explaining why she is a hero to already exhausted women. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. From my point of view, anyway. Okay. These large societal issues are not your fault. No, they're not. However, they do play a part in any conversation of this nature. Maybe so. That is not my problem to deal with your issues. All I'm going to do is indicate the reasons why I feel the way I do. And hopefully my, my reasons for this will persuade you. If they don't, that's fine. We can agree to disagree. That is perfectly fine. So I write back and I'm indicating here. And I talked about this earlier. All the time that people refuse to engage in constructive conversation, it just perpetuates the problem and further entrenches people in their positions. True. Because the, the statement, I don't debate with fascists, first of all, it escalates it, and second of all, it pushes, it makes me far more solidified in my position of the discussion. And I'm not going to play silly fools with people who are like that. I will just you know, find whatever. You're wrong. I'm right. Thanks. If I wanted your opinion, I'd give it to you. That is the type of attitude I take when people entrench and dig in. And I dig in just as much when they start do, trying to push. And that's what a lot of people are doing. And as we get back to this now, that's what brought about the horrible occurrences of violence in the U.S. after Trump's election. Again, and once again, you see the conversation has pretty much ended at this point. Like, that's the end of it. Now, the next... Uh, the next slide is, is going to be a bit of fun. So, so let's let's move this along here. Now, over the night, you can see I think this K person was starting to get a little bit angry, and they thought about it, and they came across this, and they they were, they were looking at my posts, and things got mad, and 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 finally they built themselves up into a frenzy, and they finally wrote wrote this, which is. I don't think men should comment on fascism. Their penises get in the way of the barest understanding of facts. Fucking facts that refer to as myths. What the actual fuck? And the condescending way this just got drug on and on so he could at the last word. Dear gods, no wonder we women have such a hard time engaging with men like this. Ah, be your a fucking hero. I wouldn't, can't, couldn't shouldn't and don't have your masterful patience. At 10.37 p.m. So six hours, four hours later. Now, we've gone over the number of posts. It's roughly tied. We're, we've gone over the fact, I've gone over the fact of the timestamps on each of these posts. I've gone over the fact that so far, this was an extremely civil and friendly discussion where we disagreed. We talked about what we disagreed on. B said she wanted to leave the conversation, and I made it very clear that I respected her choice and just said, this is what you need. This is, this is my last, this is the last thought. You know, we are interpreting data differently, and that's, uh, that's what's happening here. That's really all it was. And then somebody said that she was hero. I asked why, and they explained it to me. And we left it alone. 
That was the end of it. And then this person comes in and says this. Hey, talk about psychotic. And this is exactly what I said. First of all, it's what she said was very sexist. And second of all, it was completely and totally uncalled for. And so I always respond. I never fire until fired upon. But I responded to this. How sexist of you, Triglypuff. Now that is a lot better than one of the things that I wanted to say. But because I'm trying, this is Jim's wall, I'm trying to keep myself somewhat in check. B comes back. Ooh. Stephen, she writes, your pretense at discussion just got exposed with that sentence. I don't believe you were looking for positive discourse at any point in this thread. I never did. Oh, really? I stopped participating because I recognized it for what it was, not having been my first exposure to it. Whenever I or any other women subsequently wrote, didn't matter to you, we were all just sounding boards. Wrote what? What did you write? You sent me some stats can statistics. You said you felt there were holes in my theory, you silly person. And that's it. That's all there was. Nothing more. I simply responded to what you wrote. I said, when you control for these factors, the wage gap disappears. Campus rape culture is greatly exaggerated. And if campus rapes were at the rate of Sudan, I would not send my child to that college. Again, it is a true statement. The FBI statistics in the States back me up. They are the ones here who have escalated this past the point. And they're also ascribing, listen to this, listen to this. I'm going to continue here. I stopped participating because I recognize it for what, for what it was, not having to be my first exposure to it. Whatever I or any other woman subsequently wrote didn't matter to you. We were all just sounding boards for you to reflect your ideals off of. And yes, they are misogynistic. Here's why. Fem explain to me, please. All of the opinions that you have stated, all, what, two of them? Are based on secondhand speculation and points of view. No, they're not. They're based on the actual statistics, FBI statistics, stats can statistics about the wage gap, and when you and controlling the data appropriately. Those aren't points of view. All I have said is that using an average is a valid way to interpret data. Nothing more, you silly person. They are not questions meant for clarification. Oh, so. What you're saying then is, this is all decided. All we need now to do is clarify it. This is the way it is, and now we just need to clarify it to help you understand. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Doesn't work that way. Sorry. But keep femsplaining, please. I'm using the term on purpose. Although you present them as such. Actually, I wasn't asking questions. I made two points. To gain a first-hand point of view of the rele rele relevance of feminism, you have to seek a first-hand point of view. Circular, which comes from a feminine perspective. Uh, yeah. I'm a guy. I can see what I see. I've got eyes. I've got, I can observe things, right? I'm not a female. I can't have a child. I don't understand what it's like to be a woman because my ma my brain is wired like a male brain. It is what it is. You stated that you welcome intelligent discussion, but that's not true either. Intelligence is the expanding of thought through the broadening of perspective. No, it's not. Intelligence is knowing how to solve problems. Intelligence is understanding of things. It does not mean the feels. It does not mean empathizing. That's wisdom. Intelligence is knowing that blob over there on the other side of the room is a dragon. Wisdom is knowing to not go over and pet it. This, that means listening and considering different opinions, which is what I have done many times. That is not what you are doing. There is nothing to reconsider here. I, you posted your opinion, 
I posted mine, you said your piece, I said mine, you said I want to leave, I said fine, I respected you, you kept going. Others came in, said you were a hero, I asked them why, you weren't involved. And then we had that misandric bitch come in and, and just throw a stink bomb into the whole mess. And now you've pounced on with gotcha politics. And you're trying to blame me for this? Doesn't wash. If those voices get raised, you take the opportunity to degrade them further. This is what, this is what misogyny does. No, listen again. I was polite, I was calm, I was respectful until someone came in and said, what in the actual fuck, this guy is an arrogant prick and all this other stuff that that person said. I'm paraphrasing. So, no. I have been very polite, I have been very calm, I have been very respectful. Until that, I think it was Kay came in and just threw in a stink bomb for no really explained reason. You're not listening, you're looking to, you're not looking to expand your ideas. You see, now it's starting to get a bit more shrill, isn't it? I think her hair is turning red at this point. You're poking the bear so that when it finally gets mad enough to turn on you, you can throw up your hands and say, See how aggressive and unreasonable this bear is? This is why I find your discussion exhausting. It's not a discussion at all, it's a trap. You're damseling. And you're damseling by accusing me of damseling. I know full well what was going on. Polite discussion, and it was going really well. I was enjoying it, quite frankly, because it was not involving any screaming and yelling and swearing and all this stuff. But then you had to damsel, Ms. B. You had to play the victim card because I responded to someone else in kind to the way that they responded to me. You are a damsel, and in many ways, you are also a bully. This is a form of bullying. It's not a discussion at all, it's a trap. Don't pretend you don't hate feminism and feminists. We can all see that you do. Not true. I am fully supportive of equality. I am full, true equality. I am fully supportive of paying a woman the same amount as a man gets paid for the same job. Absolutely. But I am not going to put up with abuse from women. And you, just like you should not put up with abuse from men. I am not being abusive to you, Ms. B. I have been polite. I have been respectful the whole time. This is you, not me, you. Moving on. And I wrote back, of course. I'm not going to let this one go. Here's the point, I write. My sentence was reactive to an attack, a post which clearly was aimed towards me, despite not mentioning my name in it. The content was clearly a response to the things I had said. Know it as well that I never, not once, attacked you or any other individual personally, but rather discuss the issues rather than the character of the person speaking. I never fire until fired upon. Now, I've enclosed, put a box around the rest of that because that is where I ended the post with comment initially. I then went back and I decided to add to it because it was relevant. So this is where it goes from here. To the rest of your post, which suggests that one must seek out a first-hand point of view, you're wrong. While you can certainly speak about your personal experiences, facts, i.e. data, are immutable. They can't change. It does not change. All that changes, as I posted, pointed out earlier, is one's interpretation of the data. In the wage gap example, you're interpreting it one way, using the average of all the data points. I indicated above and I repeat, that is a reasonable method of interpretation. It is. It is a way to interpret data. It's fair. I and others want to see the data controlled for other factors as well, such as lifestyle choices, parenthood choices, hours at work, etc., which produces a completely different result. Again, I am not attacking, attacking, attacking any one person here. I am giving an insight into why we are having a disagreement. It's reasonable, and a disagreement is not a bad thing. 
and understanding the source of the disagreement is the first step towards resolving it. Our disagreement isn't over the data itself because we are both operating from the same data, but from how we interpret it. I just, this is what I just said to, the, to you here on the camera, and how we believe it should be interpreted. And to your accusation that my views are misogynist, well, all I can tell you is that I believe that your bar for finding misogynist must be extremely low in the realm of one who disagrees with the feminist position on item X. Lastly, it is interesting to me how you are capable of judging my intent based on my behavior. In other words, B was, um, was saying, well, you were setting the trap and we all saw through it. No, I was having a conversation. But because B is now triggered, B is convinced that I was setting this up from the beginning. You see, you see how they ascribe motive after the fact without any proof of the motive to begin with? If I had actually wanted to trigger them and have a real flame war and get all over them like that and use them in, in, to follow her accusations as a sounding board, as an echo chamber to reflect my own ideas off, I would have done a far better job of it. So I'm going to ask the question, are you psychic? Are you? Because you're either psychic or you're ascribing my intent based on, in my part, based on your prejudices you hold towards people of different viewpoints. So which is it? Are you prejudiced or are you psychic? Which one is it? Because you certainly ain't psychic. So B writes back, and B wrote back before that whole, the whole bottom of it, but it still applies. Yes, that bear is certainly unreasonable. You didn't get my point in the least. Now go ahead and have the last word. I had no need to get the last word. I'd made my point at this point, so I just let, let it go at this point. But then somebody named T comes in, and I didn't bother to respond to T either because T is a guy. T is clearly a cuck, which is short for cuckold, as in weak man. Um, you know, probably going looking to get that hand job in the car in the back alley after his feminist meeting so he can apologize and grovel and apologize again for having a penis. Dude, sit down and shut up. The only way to understand what women go through is to listen to them, which you are not doing. Cue the white knight comment. No, you cuck. I'll just call you a cuck and be done with it, and then I'll block you because that's what I do. Because, quite frankly, I've got no time for people like this. I really don't. You don't, like, I've, I've outlined my opinions very clearly. I've told people what I think. I've told them why. I've given them the data. If they decide to ignore it and just go with their own confirmation bias, I can't do anything about that. It, but you can see how this has devolved beyond into the realm of just mudslinging. And it's coming from them. This is all coming from, again, this is coming from the left because I have a different opinion than they do. And I've been very reasonable as you can see, that they can't be reasonable. Next up, now I switched to using my phone at this point because I was out and about during the day, being, uh, well, being a parent. Oh, hey, there I am. I'll just move myself over a little bit. I write back to B. Or actually, I'm writing to everyone who was liking or loving one of B's previous comments. To everyone liking and loving B's comment, it is very interesting to me that you are capable of attributing motive that I'm trying to trap or poke the bear or some such thing, simply because I'm not acting the way you want me to act. Opinion without evidence is prejudice. You have an opinion about me, but zero evidence to back it up other than the words I have put into my comments, which speak for themselves. True. By the way, intolerance plus prejudice equals bigotry. That should have been an equal sign. B responds. Oh, B took this personally. So basing my opinion, I was talking to the people responding to you, B, on the things you've actually said in this thread, equate me to being a bigot. That's a very interesting and convenient assessment. Okay, I've spent more than enough energy engaging with you in your opinion of me and the world in general are not my problem. Do what you like, think what you like. I've already exceeded my capacity for caring about it. She can't read. She obviously can't read. And I pointed that out. No, not what I said. B, read it again. 
I said you have no evidence as to my motivations other than your own preconceived notions. That is prejudice. I didn't say you were intolerant of my opinions, just that you were prejudiced about them. True. The prejudice plus intolerance equals bigotry line was a suggestion that people look at their beliefs and attitudes and decide their responses accordingly. And again, I thought that would be the end of it, but Jim stepped in at this point. Jim decided to come in and and come sailing in like a knight in shining armor, I guess. Now, I've got to remember, you got to remember, Jim is actually, I consider Jim a friend, and if Jim's going to get angry at me for doing this, well, that's, that's so be it. But I'm... I'm at the point now where I'm prepared to do this because I want to live with the cons I'm prepared to live with the consequences of my decision. This is just too ridiculous to pass up the opportunity to comment on. This just never ends, right? Jim writes. How important is it to feel right, Steve? Because frankly, I think this whole thread has done nothing but let you act superior and draw out an agonizingly uninteresting argument with my friends, one they consistently try to leave. And Jim, read it again. One that I actually respected their choices to leave. I am done with this. If it doesn't end here and now, I will delete this whole mess. Well, Jim, um, as you probably have discovered by now, I took the initiative and deleted it myself. Yes, I will be squashing all the free speech, and that sucks, but so does the constant and never-ending drudgery of the argument that no one wins. Okay. Not wanting the argument in the first place is fine. Your page, your rules, I respect that. Have it on your own post. Yep. Okay. And so I will. Now, Jim's got the right to do that. Jim's got every right to shut it down. But I do strongly object to Jim's characterization of me here. And as we have now spent uh, almost an hour doing, we can see why. Because I've gone through every comment that I was involved with and the problems. So that's the end of that one. So let's move on. As you wish, Jim. After typing this comment, I am going to turn off notifications for this thread, and that will end it right there. This was never about me feeling right. You need to understand that. My initial comment was directly related. Remember what it was? It's the wet t-shirt comment co um, contest. It was directly related to your post about the wet t-shirt contest and how there doesn't seem to be any consensus in the feminist community about the appropriateness of such events. If you follow through the thread, Jim, you will see that B reminded responded to me, and I expanded on my opinion regarding what I think about equality issues and feminism. Now, I didn't get the rest of this comment um, saved, but I basically go on, I outlined, B indicated that she wanted to leave, I said respected it, I gave a couple of thoughts, she threw some statistics out, and that was it. And then I got per um, per verbally, uh, um, personally attacked by someone, which flared the whole thing up again. So. That was it. I turned off notifications, but uh, not before a couple more comments came in from that K person. Ooh, that was the person who was nasty. Now, read, listen, listen to the, the embedded racism and sexism in this comment. Listen for it, okay? LMAO, Jesus. Oh, before I go on, I, then I said at the end of my comment, to all the believers in here, may God richly bless you. To all of the non-believers in here, May your experience of the universe be awesome. There are believers and non-believers everywhere. I wanted to cover off all the bases and include everyone. That is important because of what this person now says and the inherent bigotry, racism, and sexism in her comment. LMAO, Jesus, that was windy. Thanks, Jim. B, as always, huge respect and love and my apologies if I had thought Captain Asshat. Captain Asshat. Captain Asshat. I kind of like that. Captain Asshat, there we go. Was going to go off at you again. I would have stayed nearer to my phone to respond myself. I would have just blocked you anyway. I apologize if my commentary put you in any uncomfortable positions as he took the opportunity to impugn what he felt was the biggest threat in the room. No. <laughs> no, you were not. Not even close. I've got far more important things to worry about far more real threats in my life than silly, stupid, misandric, and um, hateful comments from man-haters like you to worry about. You are a powerhouse and bloody brilliant. Not really. 
She's she she couldn't leave the conversation when she wanted to. Not my problem. I would be afraid of you too if I couldn't see how truly awesome you were. I'm not afraid of B either. B's smart. B is an intelligent person. This person's a moron, but B is actually a very intelligent person. Unfortunately, B took the opportunity to damsel. B took the opportunity to try some gotcha politics. B tried the, to use bully tactics, and it didn't work. So that's, not, again, that's not my problem, that's B's problem. I feel like the God blesses at the end kind of sum up the whole of it. White male privileges, privilege blanketed in a dose of patriarchal belief based on God-given rights of man and all that jazz. Can't you just take a, a blessing for what it is? A goodbye? A parting? The word goodbye means God be with you. That's where it comes from. You stupid bitch. And yes, I called you a stupid bitch. Deal with it. Because quite frankly, you are. We know what it looks like. We know how it goes. And there you have it. Whoa, that was a long one. Yes, so Captain Asshat here, signing off. Yet again. I don't know what to tell you at this point. Because, like, really. So. In any case, that's my adventures over the weekend. It was certainly fun. It was certainly very silly. I don't really know what to tell you other than the fact that you see, once again, feminists have proven exactly what most of us feel about them, how stupid they are. Not, not B, not B by any stretch of the imagination, but as you can see, the damseling, the bullying, the attempts to silence, the fact that uh, there was a cuck involved, a guy, you know, who uh, you probably wanted a hand job in a car after the meeting, um, and of course the owner of the page stepped in and, and shut the whole damn thing down. And he obviously didn't want it on his page because he wanted more interesting and more friendly non-political stuff. That's fine. But the fact that he felt he needed to come in like the knight in shining armor and save all of his harem, his women, his friends from a difference of opinion over something mundane like that, over a discussion sparked simply by me commenting that I didn't think the feminist community knows what it wanted, it's pretty sad. So, there you go. Anyways, I am going to uh, sign off at this point. So, you can of course find me on Facebook, Steve Speaks Freely. I am on Twitter, at SC Britain. You can also find me, if you want to sponsor the show, you can find me in two possible places. The first one being Patreon. I'm at SC Britain over there. You can uh, choose to support me at a dollar, five dollars, or ten dollars a month. Nothing is expected, but everything is always greatly appreciated. By the same token, you can also support me over on Minds.com as well. Again, SC Britain. And the numbers are the same over on Minds.com with one, five, or ten dollars a month. And there's also the option of supporting me by wiring me points. Points enable me to spread the word about my show and about this podcast over on Minds more, more wide and more freely. So there's that option as well. So I want to thank everybody for watching and I will talk to you again on Friday where we do this all over again. I'm Steve Britton. Talk to you on Wednesday.